In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. We the people, uh, just two weeks ago, uh, completed our uh, quadrennial ritual of democracy as we entered voting booths and selected who we wanted to uh, be our leader. And we do this every four years, and it's a a wonderful testament to the system that was put in place uh, by our founders, a system that wanted to ask the question, what would it look like uh, for people to choose their own leaders? And if they didn't like them, to choose different ones later. And then if they didn't like them, to choose different ones later. There, there is a genius in that whole concept, and that whole system isn't there. It had to do with the fact uh, that Americans from colonial times on have had this sort of uh, mistrust of giving any human person or any one human person absolute power. There was a cynicism about the human heart and about the human condition that said nobody really is trustworthy enough to wield that kind of absolute power. Thus, we formed an experiment that continues on uh, on today. So, as Americans, it's a little odd for us to come to Sundays like this one, which is called the Sunday of Christ the King. Christ the King. We haven't had a king for centuries. We don't know what that's like. And certainly, as in our earthly uh, society, we don't want that at all. That's why we, our ancestors did what they did and why we continue uh, under that. And there is something wise, I think, about not entrusting any human person with absolute power, absolute authority. But the king that we celebrate today is not just any person, not just any old person. And one of the dangers in our spiritual life is the subtle creep of our uh, thinking in civil matters to our thinking in religious matters. And I'm not talking about political issues or anything like that. I'm talking about the fact that When it comes to Jesus Christ, we have a say in his rule over our life. You even hear a lot of that in some of the talk that that, uh, comes from ministers and Christian books and things like that. You know, make Jesus Lord of your life. Well, we can't make Jesus Lord of our life uh, any more than we can make God, the creator of heaven and earth. He is the the Lord of our life. Now, whether we live that way or not is a a, a different story. And the meaning of of the words is clear enough. You know, make the conscious decision to live under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. But still, we we can't make or unmake Jesus Christ anything. He is who he is. He is what he is. And on this Sunday, we emphasize the fact that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And that he is, it is so uh, by his nature as God made flesh. That he is not so by anybody's choice or election or anything like that but that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and that he is absolutely so. And we can trust him as such. We are right to mistrust ordinary human leaders and not to put too much stock or too much of our hope in them. They will fail us. They will disappoint. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. You know all of that. But Jesus is different in that regard. Jesus is different because he is a different kind of king. A king that God's people had been waiting a long time for. In this morning's Old Testament lesson from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, 
Jeremiah begins speaking the word of God to those who had been charged with the uh, civil and religious authority over the people of Israel, saying to them, Woe to the shepherds! Woe to the shepherds who are supposed to be shepherding my people, who are supposed to be feeding my flock. And all they do is, is, is devour my flock or neglect my flock. He then promises through Jeremiah, he says, I will send them shepherds who will attend to them. I will, I will give them shepherds who will feed them. And then he makes this odd statement towards the end of the passage today. He said, I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And he will rule as king with truth and justice. I will raise up for David a righteous branch. Now this is a direct prophecy. Hundreds of years before the fact of the coming of Jesus Christ. Which we look forward to as we enter in next week upon the season of Advent. We not only look back upon the coming of our King in great humility, but we look forward to His coming again in power and great glory to judge the living and the dead. And He is the righteous branch from David. He is the promised shepherd king. David, as, as awesome as he was, was, was just a shadow, just a, a foretaste of what God's people would enjoy in their true shepherd king, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he would be a king who would not abandon his people, who would not abuse his people, who would not neglect his people. And all of the things that the nations of the earth have looked to their earthly leaders for Jesus Christ, and only Jesus Christ, will bring about the unity of all the peoples of the earth. Justice, where there has been injustice. Freedom, where there has been oppression. Fullness and plenty, where there has been hunger and lack. All of these things we rightly look for in this life, but we can only get so far with it. Ultimately, we look not to ourselves or to those we would raise up, but we look to our true King, who is also our Savior and our God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And He can and is to be trusted with the power that the Father has given Him by right and by nature. Because we read in the Gospel what kind of King it is that we serve. Jesus in agonizing pain on the cross, abandoned by everyone he thought loved him and cared for him, Jesus, subject to the ridicule and, and, and embarrassment of the crowds all around him, and even subject to the jeers of one of his own fellow uh, hangers on the cross, I would say fellow criminal, but he wasn't a criminal. The other guy was. But he says, if you are the Messiah, the Christ, save us. Save yourself. And us too, by the way. But the righteous thief, if you'll forgive that characterization, the righteous thief says, shut up. We deserve to be here. I mean, we're getting the just reward, but... This guy, he's innocent. He hasn't done anything. But the thief not only recognized the innocence of Jesus, he recognized the kingship of Jesus because he said, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus, on the cross, in all of that pain, in all of that suffering, which, by the way, was not sub he was not subjected to uh, outside of his will, he, he embraced that. Jesus was not a poor, helpless victim of the Romans. Jesus willingly gave his life. Jesus willingly went up on that cross. And if they hadn't nailed him to the cross, his love for the world would have kept him up there anyway. This is the kind of king that we serve. Who even in the midst of that is reaching out to those who are near reaching out to bring them in to a place which he calls paradise. Today, you will be with me 
in paradise. Not once did Jesus think of himself. Not once did Jesus focus upon his his own pain and suffering to the exclusion of others. But even as he is dying on the cross, his arms are stretched out wide open to bring those that the world has forgotten about, those who are guilty in the eyes of the world, into his kingdom where there is forgiveness, where there is grace, and where there is peace. This is our king. And thanks be to God, he's not up for election every four years. He's never up for election. He always was king. He is king now. And he will be king forever. And in the season of Advent, we're about to begin. We look forward to the day when that kingship, which today is hidden, and we get glimpses of it every now and then, when that kingship will be made manifest in a way that will be obvious and glorious to the whole world, to the defeat and destruction of the powers of darkness, and to the victory of the saints, angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven. We may be proud citizens of this nation of the United States, and we ought to be, but we should be even prouder and more thankful that by God's grace we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven a commonwealth that shall never be overthrown, a commonwealth that is under the rule of none other than the very creator of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible, who became flesh to be with us in order that he might draw us into his kingdom that we might spend eternity with him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen.